Hello and welcome to Let's Make an Atari 2600 Game. In this series, I'm going to demonstrate every step I needed to take to get my code onto a cartridge and making a box and instructions for it, the whole thing. So uh, before we start, you might be wondering why the 2600? Well, the 2600 is great because it's so limited. You're forced to focus on your game only. Games nowadays, they have this uh, huge, they have this huge resources available. They can really, literally, you can make anything. And that's actually kind of a problem. You get this sort of design fatigue when you're creating giant worlds or even small worlds, 3D worlds, whatever. It, like, it wears you out. With coding, you get into this sort of zen mode and you, you know, iterate and reiterate very quickly. With design, you don't iterate that fast. When you're making a world, you know, maybe that tree should be there. Maybe it should be slightly to the left. Maybe it should be back a bit. Um, maybe this enemy is too hard. Um, maybe the jump is too high. Maybe it takes too long. You know, all these things, design wears you out. So when you have a constrained platform like an Atari 2600, which is about as constrained as it gets, it frees you from that hassle. You can't put a, a giant world in there. You're lucky you can even put a tree somewhere. And that liberates you. It lets you be more creative. And another thing is with the Atari game library, okay, it's got thousands of games, but the depth of those games are very shallow. And part of that is because of the style of the time. You know, lots of arcade ports were very, you know, that was kind of what you did to make your game back then. And part of it's because of the limitations uh, of the cartridge size. So since the cartridges can be larger now, you can make better games and you can increase the depth. But then you've got stuff like Pitfall and Pitfall 2, which I think Pitfall 2 is, is the pinnacle of game design for the Atari when the Atari was still relevant. So now every game you can make can be at least as good as Pitfall 2 because the cartridges now, they use sort of the same technology as Pitfall did. It has a, there's a companion chip in there that takes a little bit of the strain off the processor. I mean, not so much. You can still only have two sprites on a line. There's still all the same restrictions you have, but it's just a little bit easier to make a, an excellent game in that small space. Right, so here's my game so far. I've got this little dude up here in the corner. He's got a bow. And I've got uh, some skeletons down there. Some limitations with these hard, there can only be two sprites on one horizontal line. So one horizontal line like this. And my little character there, he's one sprite and his bow is another sprite. So that's it. That's my sprite limitation. So how come we have these three skeletons down here if, if we've reached our sprite limit? Well, that's the thing about the Atari. Even though you can only show two, you can repurpose you can repurpose your sprites over and over again. So um, that bow sprite is actually the same sprite as the skeleton sprites. And I've just set a flag to tell it to repeat the skeletons three times. So we've got three skeletons with one sprite. If I try to go down there now with this uh, hero, it's going to start flickering. And that's how the Atari got around the two sprite limit. Uh, when they're on the same horizontal line, or near it, they're going to start flickering on and off. One frame the bow will be visible and one frame the skeletons will be visible. And it looks like this. Right, so we're flickering. So that's, that's how we get around the limitations. They just flicker. So I'm going to try to minimize the flickering, but I'm not going to eliminate the flickering. It's All right, so this guy, I can move him around. Um, he's got collision detection already, so that was pretty easy to add. And I can also shoot arrows, so there's an arrow. And wherever I move, the arrow hits the first skeleton. It automatically calculates the trajectory. Because it's hard shooting diagonal with the Atari controller, this sort of helpful aim here, see that massive flicker there? That's because the arrow is using the same sprite as the bow and the same sprite as the uh, skeletons. So when I'm up here and I shoot it, my bow flickers for a moment until it gets, you know, down a bit. And then the skeletons flicker for a moment when the arrow hits them. So the skeletons, they don't do anything. Nothing else does anything. All I can do is move around and shoot. Now, that does have collision detection with this uh, as well. So the arrows will stop if they hit a wall or whatever. The play field's not going to look like this. The play field is a very low resolution. This is actually four times the resolution that the normal Atari 
games displayed. Um, a couple of the uh, geniuses programming the Atari figured out a way to uh, greatly improve the background resolution. So this is actually 44 lines, and normally you only get 11. You can go all the way up to 88. Uh, the reason I kept it at 44 was because it sort of almost matched the width. And I wanted easy. I wanted to make it easy to make square pixels. So this is what I've got so far. I think the next thing I'm going to do is make a random dungeon for my uh, my roguelike. And that's all I have for now. Uh, my hero can move and shoot, and he collides properly with the playfield. I need to animate him and the skeletons too, probably. And, you know, I could compile this, burn it to a cartridge, and play it right now on an Atari. But it wouldn't be very compelling. And the Atari already has enough games like that.